In this lesson, we're going to look at a typical examination question on how to find the resultant of forces. This question is taken from grade 11, March test 2019, question 2 of the paper. Let's begin. Four forces A and B, C and D act at a common point as shown in the diagram below. It's this point here. The magnitude of forces are as follows. A is 5 newtons. Force B is 8 newtons. Force C is 6 newtons and force D has an unknown magnitude. Okay, now we need to use whatever information we discussed in the previous lessons, I mean in the previous video. Okay, now if you look at this diagram here, you can see that force A is in the second quadrant and FD is in the fourth quadrant. Now in the previous lessons, we discussed that when forces are in quadrant or acting at angles, we resolve those into vertical and horizontal components. So what I'm going to do, we're going to draw another free body diagram where we're going to show only forces in the vertical direction and forces in the horizontal direction. Now let's begin with this force here and go clockwise. Okay, so we begin with this force. This force is six newtons. This is FC equals to six newtons. And we come to this one, FD. FD is in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, the X is positive and Y is negative. And therefore, we're going to have FD along the positive axis, X axis I mean. So this is FD subscript X. The vertical component of FD is downwards. So this is going to be FD in the Y direction. Now we come to this force, FB. So FB is to the left. So we just include it like this. And this is force B equals to eight newtons. Now we come to this force FA. FA is in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, Y is positive. Therefore, the vertical component of FA is going to be upwards. So we include a force upwards and we call this force FA in the Y direction. We now need to in indicate the direction of FA in the X direction. This is going to be towards the left because in the second quadrant X is negative. So the direction is towards the negative X axis. So this is FA in the x direction. Now we have completed our free body diagram and we resolved all angles that are acting, sorry, all forces that are acting at angles. Okay, now we can go ahead and answer the question 2, 1. Define the term resultant vector. Resultant vector is the vector sum. Of two or more vectors two or more vectors okay okay two comma two calculate the magnitude of the resultant of force B and force C okay let's refer to our free body diagram the one that we just drew, okay? In the FC is in the positive X axis. So it's going to be given a plus sign. So we take it as a positive vector. And FB is to the left or along the negative X axis. So we're going to give it a negative sign. So the resultant F press is going to be 
Fc plus minus Fb. Now we substitute the numbers. Fc is 6 newtons and Fb this is now going to be negative 8 and we get negative 2 newtons and this is 2 newtons to the left. Remember that the negative here indicates the direction of the force. Okay. 2,3 The net horizontal component of forces A, B, C and D is equal to 1,25 newtons. Okay, it says here the net horizontal component. What do they mean by the net horizontal component? If we come to our free body diagram, the one that we, we drew ourselves, it means the vector sum of all the forces along the horizontal direction is 1,25. This force they've given us here. Okay, so in the horizontal direction, we have one, two, three, four, four forces. Okay, so they are saying, sorry, Mitch, they are saying the vector sum sigma fx is equal to 1,25. 1,25 newtons. Okay, we also know from the three body diagram. That sigma fx is going to be this force here plus this one plus this one plus this one four forces but forces to the right are positive and forces to the left are negative therefore we're going to have fc plus fdx plus what other forces there we have FC, FDX, and FAX, and FB, but FAX should be negative. So this is plus minus FAX plus minus FB. This is equals to 6, FC is 6 plus FD is unknown. Let's go check FD. FD is an unknown force. Right now, I want to write the magnitude of FD in the x direction. I'm giving FD. FDX is the component of this force. Now, it's along the x-axis, the positive x-axis. So therefore, this is fdx and this angle here is going to be 60 degrees because this one is 30 the other one is 60 degrees the total must be 90 okay so i'm going to use this angle between the horizontal and the force the angle is 60 degrees so i'm just going to say this is change color this is fd cos 60 degrees now minus I'm going to do the same for FAX. Now, FA is this force here, but FAX is to the left, and this is FAY. FAY, FAX. Right, so what is the angle between FA and the horizontal? This angle here is going to be 30 degrees because I, I'm giving 150 there. Okay. So now I can write 5 cos 30 degrees minus, minus 8. Sigma fx is 1,25. I can just write 1,25 this side. Now, if I'm making fd cos 60, the subject. This is equal to 1,25 minus 6 plus 5 cos 30 degrees plus 8. Therefore, 
the value of FD is equal to 15,16 newton. Hence, calculate the magnitude of the resultant force acting at point O. And they, they want us to calculate the magnitude of the net force acting at this point here, point O. Okay, let's do that here. This is 2,4. We know that to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force, we're going to need the sum of forces in the x direction and the sum of forces in the y direction. The sum of forces in the x direction is given as 1,25. So we don't need to calculate it, but the sum of forces in the y direction, we do not know. Therefore, we're going to calculate it. So let's go to our free void diagram and check how many forces are acting along the y direction. We can see that along the y direction, we have FAY and FDY. We make FAY positive and FDY negative. So it's going to be FAY plus minus FDY. And this is 5 sine 30. Remember that the angle between FA and the horizontal is 30 degrees plus minus uh, 15 comma one six sine sixty degrees. Remember the angle between F D and the horizontal is sixty degrees. Now this works out to be negative ten comma six three newtons. We can say this is ten comma six three newtons downwards. Okay, now we have both the sum of forces in the x direction and the sum of forces in the y direction. We can apply Pythagoras theorem and say the resultant force squared is equal to the sum of forces in the x direction squared plus the sum of forces in the y direction squared. Hey. And finally, FRS is the square root of 1,25 squared plus negative 10,63 squared. And this works out to be 10,70 newtons. Okay, the question ask us to calculate the magnitude and not the direction so we are not going to go ahead and calculate the angle theta here all right this takes us to the end of our lesson thank you see you next time bye